on guys welcome to my youtube channel i am renee like i also go by the name renny if you are a usual subby welcome back so uh for this episode we will be diying our own headboard our own what don't worry it's gonna be easy it's gonna be simple anybody can do this if i can do it. actually i'm not gonna talk i'm not gonna trash talk myself and say if i can do it everybody can do it if you are as talented as i am <laughs> okay if I can do it guys, you can do it. It's simple. It's not a lot of work. I think I think it's not a lot of work and basically this is just something you can do in a day. Obviously with a lot of change left in the hours that you spend on this, um it doesn't take as much time. So, um why am I DIYing my own headboard? Headboards are very expensive and honestly when it comes to this headboard, I've seen a, a lot of it on Pinterest. Pinterest, potato, potato. As long as you get what I'm trying to say. And basically, I've never seen this headboard in any store that I usually walk into and I, you know, browse and window shop or anything like that. And also, I wanted that personal touch to my bedroom. And personalizing furniture gives you that nice little uh, leeway that you can actually create something to your liking that you like it you know ever found something in the store and you're like i wish they had added this on or had minus this out when you diy things you get to actually control the design and everything and the outcome of the product so that's what i'm going to be doing and also i am cutting costs because this is a channel where we cut costs we're not about the life of spending a hell of a lot of money for furniture and pieces that we can DIY ourselves. If we can DIY it, let us get away with a DIY. So let, let me not extend this intro a lot further than what it needs to be. Let us get into our beautiful headboard DIY. DIY headboard. I don't know. I'm gonna figure this off camera. So yeah. Let's get into it. Is it headboard DIY or DIY headboard? So I went to one of my favorite hardware stores, which is Leroy Merlin, and I went with measurements on hand. I just wanted to show you guys that you don't have to own power tools to do this or do any DIY. You can have the hardware store cut your wood down for you. Obviously not all of them do this, only some of them do, and they cut my wood for free. And as soon as I was done, I carried everything home for a good send, building my way from 80 grids up until 220 grids and honestly this was like i'm ironing clothes but then <laughs> yeah as soon as i was done sending everything down i took a damp cloth not wet damp and i wiped down all the dust and debris prepping for stain i then went to my other favorite hardware store which is builders warehouse to select uh, some stain from the brand that I've been using since I learned how to stain and I chose this teak color I wanted to have a natural wood color if I was to use natural wood But obviously on my case I had pine wood to work with so what I did was this is a hack that you guys should take with you guys If you're not sure about a certain stain test it out on a small wooden block to see if you like it or not In my case I didn't like it because it had this very orange undertone that I wasn't a fan of and and honestly it didn't look that real natural wood to me it just looked orange so I went into my stash and I grabbed one of my um, stains that I already had on hand which is Imbua stain color and I mixed it up with the teak just so I can get rid of that orange undertone that I was getting and I mixed it up and tested it out again to see if I preferred just a teak or I preferred it with a mixed color stain and I realized that I actually like it mixed over the it just being orange and that's what we went with so i kept some of my scrap wood what i did was i put it underneath here so i can lift up this wood from the floor so i can be able to stain it on all sides and then leave it on this and then have it dry without having to wait and then turn it around and stain it on the other side so yeah now that i worked out the stain color i had to make 
stir up a huge portion of the stain so i can go over all of these wooden planks and obviously i was using a wipe down method if you guys don't know the stain that i'm using is basically a stain and a sealer all in one but however if you wipe it down it you you're losing that protective measure of it being a sealer so you need to go over this with a sealant especially if it's going to be some furniture that you're going to use in a high traffic area you need to use this method um so that you can maintain and keep the wood um in good condition and this is what it looked like as soon as everything was dried out i loved the color and i was good to go and then i started working out the template of how i wanted uh, this headboard to sit I worked this out in a in a matter of measuring my bed, the, the width of my bed and the height of my bed. And then I knew that the bottom of the plank, I wanted it to be slightly covered by uh, the bed. So I reduced it by at least um, five centimeters from the height of my bed. Um, and also the width, I extended it five centimeters on either side of my bed so that everything can come together and I started measuring everything out so that I can start making markings for when I'm starting to drill guys it's very important that you measure why do I say this it's because my drill bit was so short that it couldn't uh, drill through and through so I had to measure the other side as well so that I could drill the other side and have the holes meet each other on like between the wood so if you go off on your measurements your holes will not align so this is where you need to go with the method of measure 10 times drill once measure 10 times cut once and basically I drilled every hole obviously creating a wider hole so that uh, the screwdriver can meet right inside and obviously I pre-drilled where the wood was going to meet on this plank so that everything can just be easy attachment and easy assembly So when it comes to the fabric that I want for my headboard, obviously leather is my go-to because it's durable and honestly you can wipe it down if you ever get it dirty or anything like that. I don't even know what I'll be doing getting my headboard dirty, but anyways, uh, when you dust it off or anything like that, fabric basically needs to be washed. Leather, you can just get away with wiping it down and leather treatment. That's all. So that's the kind of uh, fabric that I'm going for. But when it comes to color, I want something that will condone and stick with me going for the earthy calm tone that I want for my bedroom. So I need something that's more of a tan color, like that tan orange color, or going to that brown color, or maybe caramel color, or maybe I just don't know my colors. But anyways, that's the color that I'm going for, and I'm going to hunt it down until I find it. I am determined. Yes, I am. I'm hungry. So I went to one of these fantastic fabric stores that have a very vast selection of material to pick out the leather that I wanted. And as soon as I found the color, they cut it for me in size and I was good to go. Very inexpensive, trust me, very inexpensive. And then when I got back home, basically I had to work out how I wanted the leather to sit by measuring out where I should cut it. I didn't want to go the long way and measure, take out a measuring tape and measure everything. So I went the shortcut way and I basically put my my wooden uh, the the frame on top of the material and then worked out how much of the material I need I then measured out the width of nine centimeters and I cut a strips a strips of nine centimeters and I just continued cutting it to size I don't know how much I needed I just cut enough and what I thought would be enough um, from everything but basically i used that portion that i marked out and cut to size so yeah it's a nine centimeter width this is where you can personalize it you can go wider than this you can go skinnier than this i've seen different kinds where they have it slightly thinner and it still looks nice and i've seen kinds where they have it thicker i just preferred going with nine centimeters let us attach this to that Put it down here, put it there. Oops, my bad. <laughs> Oh, 
Actually, let's make it two centimeters. So I stapled the one side as soon as I was done you need to make sure you go to the other side pull it as tight as possible and then staple it down obviously measuring two centimeters of the distance or social distancing I know that I shouldn't be making such jokes but basically this is what it looked like as soon as I was done just make sure you guys pull it as tight as possible and then as soon as that was done, it was time for us to go for the second part, which is weaving. So what you do is you attach it at the top, um, the way you, we attached it in the beginning. The only, difference, the only difference is we'll be using a weaving technique. So basically you go over, under, over, under, over, under, up until you get to the bottom frame and you staple it down. When you come to the second row, you should go the opposite direction. If you start it on, uh, over, you should start at the bottom for the second row. And if the previous row, uh, you basically go opposite to opposite. If the previous row starts over, and then the next row you're gonna start under. So that's just how the weaving technique goes. It's actually pretty much self-explanatory as you watch me do it but then yeah don't forget to measure your two centimeters and this is pretty much what it looked like when I was done okay you guys remember my little friends from my shelf DIY I'll be using two of these and using um, nail on picture mounts <laughs> for the headboard the headboard will be able to stand on its own but however i'm just instilling this as just precaution that it doesn't fall over or tip over whatever it is in case i push the bed too far or if i move the bed or something like that so it doesn't actually make my headboard fall this is gonna keep it in place and just keep it steady um yeah this is just just for safety net for control because i mean i'm a headboard guys and i trust myself but like this is my very first i wouldn't say major woodwork but i think it is kind of my very first big piece of woodwork that I've ever done so just for safety net for control I'm just gonna have this in place so I'm gonna have them on um, did I drop a nail yes I did um, on the ends close to the ends and then obviously have them hidden and yeah that's what I'm going to do so you guys have seen me attach these hooks i just used that same method that i used for the shells i will link it down below and this is what it looked like after Okay guys, that was our video for today. Um, I, I've got a confession to make. I've got a confession to make. The easy part of this headboard is what gave me the hardest time. Because at first I was concentrating, weaving everything through and that was good and that was fine. And then coming towards the end of the headboard, my concentration level just went so low that I had to undo and redo and undo and redo because of weaving. I just skipped certain things. Oh my goodness. And even now in the finish, if you actually pay close attention, you realize that I messed up the weaving coming towards the end. 
and i'm at the point where i've made peace with the fact that you know what when you do things yourself they're gonna be those imperfections and although i could have easily perfected this after a long day i am tired i am done you know so yeah that was a bit of a hustle for me although the frame the part that was supposed to be difficult which was the frame was the easy one and guys something i didn't do which i would suggest you also do give it a support right in the middle depending on how big your bed is if you're going for a queen size and king size my bed is a king size so the headboard was a did i say king size why am i lying you can't even fit a girl <laughs> There would only be a bed in this room if it was king size. What I'm trying to say is, my bed is a queen size bed. So if you're building a headboard for queen size to king size, give it a middle support for your frame. That way um, it has that additional support. But however, mine is doing fine because I have it installed to the wall the way I did. So anyways, that is the end of our video. I'm not going to run this long because we are supposed to get into the what? The cost. So I'm going to go right ahead. In this video, we only have three costs. Um, starting with the stain, the stain cost 119 rands. And obviously we're mixing it with a stain that we already had. So it's good to have things that, to use things that you already have in the house instead of going out to buy new things. So we mixed our stains a bit and basically the one stain only cost me 119 rands. When it came to uh, the, wo the wood, it was 139 rands each and I needed two of them. So that made it 278 rands. And then uh, when you go to the leather, it cost me 200 and I think four rands or so. I lost the receipt. And funny thing is, there is a clip on this video where I show you the receipt, but it's 200 and something rands um, for three square meters and i use less than three square meters and i still have a lot more left over so you can do make do with maybe two square meters meter square square meters how do they measure fabric anyways moving on so the overall cost of this headboard it cost me 597 rands so um the only place i know you can get a headboard that costs that much is probably deco fern but however if you want to personalize it to your liking and do what I did, that's how much it's going to cost you. And obviously, labor free. So why not go with that? And if you guys loved my head one and you love this video, and obviously you'll get a proper after preview at the very last episode of the season. So yeah, everything needs patience, needs time. But if you love this video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys have questions about this diy leave a comment down below and obviously don't forget to turn on your bell notification because this is a series and you don't want to skip any episode otherwise you will miss out on the big diys that, and major diys that i'll be having in the series so that being said be kind love and light oh enjoy your day too bye